episode, I had the chance to talk with Cynthia Damore, who is a dear friend and also a brilliant thought leader in the association space about uh, strategic illiteracy, which is an interesting way to look at how people lead and some of the struggles that a lot of our leaders are facing at a time when associations truly, and any organization truly need to innovate. And so I had a great time talking with her. I hope you enjoy this episode of Association Chat and uh, drop us a line, leave comments, share on Twitter, tell us what you think um, about this episode and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to this edition of Association Chat, your weekly online discussion for the association community, where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with the topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm your host, Kiki Latalien, CEO of Amplified Growth Digital Marketing and host of this weekly chat that's been around since 2009. Wow. I know. <laughs> it's been a while. We all know the drill, you guys. We all know the drill. In the association space, the popular refrain, but we've always done it that way. It's caused so many migraines. It might be causing migraines for you today. And it's been hard for association staff and consultants alike who run into dead ends when words like innovation come along and we attempt to shake things up. Our guest today believes that strategic illiteracy is rampant and that it is impacting your associations right now. This week, we're talking with leadership strategist Cynthia Demore. Cynthia has spent the last 20 years helping associations get more members involved. She's the author of the Lady, Lazy Leader's Guide. It could be the Lady Leader. The Lazy Leader's Guide to Outrageous Results. And Cynthia's Wake Up Wednesday prediction of more than half of associations being dead or dying by 2030 launched quite the conversation in the association community. Today, we're going to talk with her, okay? We're going to talk with Cynthia about her concern around strategic illiteracy and its potential to compromise your association. So does that sound good, you guys? Are you ready? Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to be here, Kiki. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've got this whole list of questions and everyone who's watching live, one of the best parts of doing the chat using uh, this platform is that you're able to ask questions along the way. Uh, you can ask them in the questions and answers area, or you can ask them over here on the side and we're going to look at them. I'm going to try to pull them over as, as it makes sense. And, uh, but don't be shy and feel free to ask along, but I'm going to kick things off with my first question, which is let's talk about this strategic illiteracy thing. It makes for a great headline. It might be a, a little bit of link bait. Um, tell me, what are we talking about? I hope you're not switching. I don't know. What do you mean, Link Bay? Oh my I gosh. Know. It makes all I know is it it's compelling enough that it makes me want to click to find out more. Okay. I love I love uh this idea that we're so focused on these other things, but here we have uh this thing called strategic illiteracy and not a lot of people talking about it. So what is it? Well, you know, people have been strategic, strategically illiterate for a while because think about it. When you think of your um, strategic planning sessions, you say, we're going to have strategic conversation. And members say, ah, oh, it struck me, you know, pick the pins in my eyes. I don't want to do this, whatever. Yeah, a lot of times the reason why that happens is because they've never been taught how to be strategic. And those who have been taught to be strategic and have been successful in the past with everything going on and all the disruption, we're in a whole new world and it takes different skills. So not only did we not have strategic skills in the past that really made, gave us a literacy, a fluency in strategy, um, but when you go into the future, it's a whole different set of strategic skills that we now need to be able to talk about as well. Right. But 
I see someone's talking about uh, so many eyes rolling, eyeballs rolling. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk strategic. And I've gotten comments from people. Cynthia, strategic, please. Do we have to talk strategic? You're usually fun. Why do you have to talk strategic now? And, um, you know, th that's the whole thing, Kiki, because where did you learn to be strategic? You know, did, did you right. learn it in school? Was it on the MEEP or the you know, yeah, SATs no. or whatever? <laughs> Yeah, no one's no one's asking. No one's saying, okay. And today we're going to talk about how to be strategic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I never had that discussion. So, no, and no, no one has really. I mean, most people haven't. There's a few professions that might train to it. But what I find really interesting is working with so many associations through the years. Even those that you would think would be strategic leaders are not necessarily functioning as strategic leaders in their associations. Okay, and Amanda so. Kaiser, she says over here, she says, or people will think that they're being strategic, but they're actually being tactical. Now, that's something I run into constantly. Yeah. You know, with the work that I do, you start talking about uh, digital strategy and people start talking about tactics, you know, and it's yes. a very different thing. So, yes. Okay, so we're talking about strategic illiteracy. Mm -hmm. why, why does it exist? It exists because the schools, the public school system was developed to teach people how to be good employees. And if you look at it, it started in the United States right around the time of the Industrial Revolution, right? Mm -hmm. So what was the big employer at that point? Manufacturing plants. Right, working in the factory. Yeah. Do they want you to think? No. Do they want you to ask questions? Why are we putting this screw here? No, don't ask. The, what do they want you to do to work in a factory and be successful? What do uh, you got to do? But put your cog in the wheel. <laughs> Just be yeah. another cog in the wheel. Put your little piece in. Right. Do, do thing. what you're told. Yeah. Don't ask questions. Clock in, clock out. On time, please. Yes. And follow the rules because if we chop off your arm, it slows down production. <laughs> right. 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 And so that was the whole purpose behind public education was to help these people get some, you know, literacy, be able to read so they can follow the rules, but to be that type of employee. Fast forward, and it's it's been that way all along. We haven't really shifted. In the 70s, like when Gen X was coming through school, we shifted a little bit to more group thought and let's get them to ask why. And then when the Gen Xers came to work, what was the biggest complaint about them? Why are they asking why? You know, they don't need to know why. They need to do what they're told. Um, things like no child left behind and all the uh, standardized testing also put it in that any time where you might teach strategic type thinking, those that doesn't help kids pass tests. And we've got to teach to the test now. It's been that way for almost 20 years. We've got to teach to the test so people can take a test, which is not strategic type of thinking. So it's just fallen off the board at schools. Well, okay, so then we're in trouble, right? Because the schools aren't doing it, and here we mm -hmm. are, and they're still not doing it. So what now, right? Right, well, and it, it, it gets really interesting because you start looking at, well, then who has learned it? And in, you know, in associations, there's usually a visionary, right? There's the yeah, CEO yeah. that's the visionary. You hope. And you right. hope, right? right? And they don't have a whole team of visionaries because that would be chaos, right? If we're all going to our vision and that a lot of times it's like there's the visionary, the strategic person, and the rest are implementers. And what I'm what I'm saying, you know, with everything coming in, we've got to get more people to embrace strategic thinking, to be more open to new ideas. I mean, strategic with, okay, let's get the word on the table, Kiki, disruption. Oh, right? oh. <laughs> we have to, if we don't say disruption, we're going to have to turn in our consulting card. That's right. Like, that's, how many consultants true. spoke about disruption this week? Yeah. Um, but with so many big changes coming on, we've got to be able to read what's coming at us, which is a strategic skill, mm -hmm. and respond and get innovative and figure things out, you know, spinning it out there and what's possible. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm with you here. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm all about disruption. So, I mean, ding, ding, ding. You like, but right. okay. So. What I'm hearing, though, there, there are a couple of things, a couple of directions that I want to naturally go in. Okay. One is I just want to dig in deeper and say, OK, so what does it look like that we're teaching that we're teaching them to be literate in, in, in strategy, that they're able to do strate strategic thinking and understand what that means? And then the other side is what you just said about, you know, we have 
um, we have like one visionary leader because you can't have a bunch or they'd be shooting off. So I can see how that would be perhaps a danger at some point if you if you got people lined up. So why don't we just, um, why don't we go in the direction of what does it look like to actually, you know, teach people how to be strategically literate, right? Or literate, how would I say that? So they <laughs> understand strategic thinking. Well, you know, <laughs> can you think strategically about right, things yeah. strategically, right? You know, it gets really interesting because is there a body of content that makes people strategists and stuff? And mm -hmm. yeah, we can, we can build that out. Does everybody need to get there to be a good contributor in their association these days? No, I don't think we have to have all the skill sets. I think there's some that we need to have. We need to um, let go of the past in many ways. You know, when we start talking about we've always done it this way, mm -hmm. that's a past the past driven focus. Right. So it's getting comfortable with going into the unknown. Right. So mm -hmm. when we get into the unknown, then there's a whole bunch of skills that as leaders need to look at. How do I keep people feeling safe? Right. Because the minute I don't feel safe, I'm going to go back to what I know. Well, and that's that's also the big challenge, though, right? Because as a leader, so so often you don't want to say, I don't know, or you don't want to show any sort of any level of weakness because you feel like, you know, they're going to pounce or you're going to be out or something if, mm -hmm. if you show that you don't know just absolutely everything or close to it. So, um, well, and I, it's, it's, a part, it's going to be part of the job of the leaders to start talking about these various changes that are happening and that there is no one right answer right now. Mm -hmm. In fact, the idea that there is only one answer is what's going to put you in a sinking ship mm -hmm. because there's so much change coming that you've got to become more nimble. And we need lots of people trying different things versus the association taking three years to get on board with one thing. Right. right. You know, how long do we say, oh, we're going to change. It takes three years. Well, at the rate, you know, I was reading some research about how the data experts, big data people are talking about how we'll be doubling our data every two weeks very soon. Wow. You know, how do you keep up with that? How can you be the answer person? I think we need to reframe leaders into the process people okay. that we can guide people into meaningful discussions. We can see what's get help, have them help us see what's coming have them help us um, go through the process to figure out what the heck to do, weigh out which feels like the best fit at the time. And we can do that kind of thing and keep monitoring and adjusting. Okay. If so anybody comes in and says, I've got the answer, that's not true. Huh. Okay. So what do you do then? So what next? Well, you keep working the process. I mean, strategy, looking at things like a strategic plan or what's coming and the impact can't be an annual event anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some associations that once every three years, they update their strategic plan. And that's when they talk strategy. And if you look at this change is happening like this, you can't wait three years for that. So we need to get a more get, get a team looking at things more regularly. You know, I really I would love to see associations when they're hitting it once a month and they have a team of people that look out what's happening, do the analysis. Um, like I just wrote this week in my Wake Up Wednesday about Ross. Did you, I don't know if you saw that or not. Mm -hmm. um, Ross is a, a lawyer who's, uh, he's got hired by a firm to be a bankruptcy lawyer. He's an AI. And he's loaded with all of the uh, bankruptcy court cases, all the precedents. He monitors it 24-7. And he's, not, he's like more of a resource guy than an out front guy. But he, he got hired, and now he's got all this case law that you can ask him a question, and he'll put out there what the answer is, and here's all of the reasons why he does the analysis, and he gives citations. Okay. Okay? So, yeah. He came out 10 months ago. So think about it. If he's doing this in legal under bankruptcy, why wouldn't they start bringing him out in other areas of law? Once they fine-tune his people skills and onboarding people to work with him and all, it makes sense. Well, then why wouldn't we start adding them in the different areas of law? Right. Right. And if I can do that with law, can't I do that with other professions? And so say your association has, um, you have all this uh, proprietary information, like say you're a medical group and you have a whole bunch of slides that help people do diagnose, diagnose, diagnostics, uh, diagnostics. Mm -hmm. 
diagnosis. <laughs> there you go. And so part of the, the perk of your membership is they get to pull this up. So he gets, the AI gets your information and it now has it and can use it. Does right. you, do you need to have members? Yeah. You know, and yeah. you license it. What do you do? Well, and you know, Karen over here, she said there's a bot to help people fight traffic tickets now too. Mm -hmm. Amanda says, wow, that's a big shift for many CEOs and their teams to go from the answer person to a process person. But I see tremendous opportunities in this new worldview. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, how do we get them there? I mean, how do we go uh, from our, our roles as association executives and consultants and start moving our organizations in the direction in which they need to go like how do we start teaching this this sort of okay. knowledge you know? well first is you need to get yourself trained mm -hmm. you know you need to get comfortable in these process skills that you can do the analysis i'm a huge fan of teaching people to look at something and analyze it out three times so the impact of the impact of the impact to your association Mm -hmm. or to the community or to the world, and then to your association. It's always doing impact of impact of impact. Most people stop at impact, one impact. Well, what's, you know, if, then, then this, right? Yeah. Well, I want to go if, then, then, then. Can I just admit I hate doing that? Like, I know it's really good, but it's never, ever, if it's easy, you're doing it wrong. And so mm -hmm. I naturally sort of, like, I don't know. I sort of uh, dig my heels in and I get too analytical on each one. And I wonder if I then I wonder if I'm if I'm doing it right. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a tricky thing, right? Well, and that's because you're going that there's got to be one right answer. Mm -hmm. Right. If right. we turn this into a party and we say, OK, we're going to do this. Maybe we put a clock on it. We play beat the clock. We do it as a team and we're going to just go take some levels of analysis and push it out there. Then all of a sudden it takes the pressure off being right, mm -hmm. you know, because first you need to get your skills to this piece. Then you're going to create it that right. We're, we're looking to get ahead, not necessarily be right, which right, is very right. different. And you are not alone and not liking this. Yeah, I know Most I'm not. No. I know I'm not. <laughs> look, I mean, who, look, at, look in the news. People are not taking responsibility for their actions right now. And a lot of them don't get that their actions have impact, mm -hmm. let alone impact of impact of impact. And so it's like, getting learning this skill and framing it in your head as a leader that this is a, a a valid skill to use or a valid process to use it can be exciting and then it's almost like then you have to turn around not only teach it but sell it to other people yeah okay so you have to get yourself up to speed with that and then hopefully you know start sharing that getting other people up to speed with where they need to be with it as well is everybody i mean Basically, are we looking at associations, organizations that are are just full of strategically illiterate people? I mean, I didn't ask how pervasive this is, right? Mm -hmm. Is this is this like all of us, or is it is it? You know? I would say it's the vast majority. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if we came up with a test that was like 80, 90 percent. Yeah. Because yeah. we we haven't been taught it. I mean, Kiki, let, let's take this real concrete. I mean, how okay? do you know? Is there like a is there like a good question? Like, is yeah. there a litmus test? On, let's uh, have this conversation, right? Right. You get told you have to lose fifty pounds. <laughs> Not that you do. You look fabulous. But <laughs> if the the typical person hears they have to lose fifty pounds, what's the first thing they think they need to do? Uh, stop eating so much. And what's the other thing? Exercise. So eat less, move more, right? Yep. So they immediately go into, I've got to eat less and move more because that's something concrete, sequential, it's tactical and stuff they can do. In spite of the fact that research for the last 20 years has said that 99% of people will gain back everything they lose. True. Right? Yeah. So in spite of the fact we know it's a failure strategy, we invest thousands upon thousands of millions of dollars in it every year. Okay. Right. So we're not even waking up to what we are doing is not working because at least we're doing. Yeah. You know, and so that's where action does not mean brilliance. But the average person will go back to, I mean, the school said, if you learn this body of knowledge, this body of facts, you will be a competent employee. You will be successful. And now the stuff that they taught us doesn't work. Right. So how can we, you know, how do you get it so that why where would people learn this part of how to be more strategic. It's not gonna happen in education as much. Uh, the classes that teach it, art, music, 
are, yeah. you know, even PE. I mean, even with critical thinking, like I'm, I'm thinking about, um, it's almost as if you would have had to have gone through and, and studied things like philosophy and uh, really dug into, and science, so that you would really dig into how to test, how to, you know, your hypothesis, improving it, and really thinking on your own along the way so that you weren't taking things for granted or you weren't just taking these best practices that haven't necessarily panned out over time. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, just uh, just a temperature check, uh, Lynn saying spot on, Cynthia, strategic flexibility has to be supported by business model flexibility with literacy in both. And Karen saying, I'm hearing a strong case for a liberal arts education. I utilize mine every day. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And so, you know, I, I have, I've been reading a lot more about ways that you can test out uh, different theories and stuff. But as you can tell, even from my questioning, you know, this is something that after years and years and years of being indoctrinated into a certain way, a certain, you know, way of thinking, a certain way of solving problems, it's very, very difficult for us to pull ourselves out of doing that. What I'm hearing you say is that if people are to challenge the strategic illiteracy and start first by, by educating themselves and then educating the people, their team around them, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see how this wouldn't only impact organizations and the innovation that they're that they're trying to to discover and uncover and create, but but it would also help them in their personal lives. It seems like I mean, it seems like this would be something when you start changing the way that you think, um, it cha it changes all aspects of your life. Oh, absolutely, and. You know, with the changes coming on, we need to be able to do this for our lives and our profession and our association anyways, mm -hmm. you know, because it's going to impact, you know, what is it? The um, factory in China, they had 650 workers and they, re they replaced all but 60 with machines. And now they're taking it down to 20 and right. they've increased their, you know, output 250 percent, but they've decreased costs. And you start looking at this. What's going to happen to these people? What's the impact on my world? But I don't want to go fear mongering because I don't. I don't think that's the route because that shuts people down too. I get scared. I'm going to go down. And the reason why I was talking about the schools not teaching it is because I also think it's a, it's okay to feel okay that you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and even the scientists, some of them have been taught, it depends on what flavor of science there's right and wrong. And if this hasn't been proven several times, then it's wrong, which in a world where there's no rules and there's, it's all new, there's going to be a lot of mushiness. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get comfortable in that space. So it's going to be looking to who are the creative, innovative, more strategic people, getting them to teach you, you know, exploring and learning yourself, practicing. Um, for me, I started doing impact of impacts when I was about six years old. My dad was in marketing and he was brilliant at it. And so his thing was he would always, okay, so what's the impact? What's the impact? So I just got lucky. I was raised, you know, very strongly. Well, what's the impact of that? What's the impact of that? And um, let me let me see if anybody out here <coughs> feels brave. Does anyone feel brave? Does anyone want to try to? Because I bet Cynthia would walk us through doing this. And I mean, I'm willing to do. I'm willing to play with you, Cynthia. But okay. like, I don't want to. I don't want to take all the fun for myself. Is any, does anyone want to jump on and uh, participate? Maybe have maybe see where this takes you. See how, see if you're you're ready to take on the challenge of strategic literacy. Maybe not. Maybe not on a Tuesday. Too early. You know, week. and we don't we don't even have to go that far. Sometimes it's just opening your hut yourself up. Yeah. So we could play a really simple game. Okay, I that, like simple. Simple's good. Okay, Adrian wants to play with us. Oh, good, good. Jump on. Let me see. Let me invite you on, Adrian. How many can we take? Oh, we can take four. four. Anybody else want to play? We'll play a simple game. Yeah. We're not going to go all the way to hardcore strategy. Yeah. We're just going to do a Let beginner's me, game. I'm inviting Adrian on screen right now. Anybody else want to jump on? I love it. I love all these brave. I love, I love that Adrian is being so brave. 
You all can play in the chat if you want once we get yes, started. Yes. You can play over there. By the way, did you see this really cool association chat discount? Ah, Adrian, hello. Hi there. Hey. She is on. Hey. I love this screen in the back. That's always so fun. Okay. Um, so, all right. Cynthia, what's the simple, simple game or simple exercise that we can do? Okay. So when you are trying to be more strategic and you want to start opening up, so the first step is just simply mm -hmm. opening up more. So we are so used to thinking in ruts, AKA how we've always done it. We don't necessarily think about different aspects or different things of it. So we're going to play a game where I'll give us, I'll start a sentence and then we're going to go to you, Adrian, or to you, Kiki, then you, Adrian, and we'll go in a circle. And I want you to one up the person behind you. One up. And with okay. details. Well, you're going to one up them with details or description or whatever. So, for example, I bought a new pair of shoes. That's like my okay. statement, my brag. Kiki, I want you to give more details. They were fantastic and you, fluffy same. and sparkly. Okay, so you bought... So that's good. You bought a new pair of shoes that were fantastic, fluffy, and sparkly. Adrian, one up that. Um, they were the best Mark Jacobs shoes money could buy. Oh. Okay. And my shoes were so fantastic. Not only were they sparkly, flashy, and Mark Jacobs, they also have wings on them that fly me from city to city at and will. What's so and what's so Kiki. funny is that I keep racking up additional miles because Delta hasn't caught on yet, that it's just my shoes and not Delta. And I think I've really cornered the market on a new way to improve business travel. Fantastic, Look, Adrian. The real secret of my shoes mm -hmm. are they help me slay association dragons every day. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> I love mm -hmm. it. In fact, these shoes are so phenomenal that I've had certain world leaders calling me to try and bribe me for my shoes and their magic ability. The only Kiki. challenge is when John Graham contacted me for his own pair that I only had the flashy, sexiest kind, and I knew that that didn't fit, fit into his aesthetic. So and I Adrian. Thought, what if I designed my shoes for everyone to fit everyone's needs and everyone's style? There you go. Okay, so how did that feel? Fun, and and actually, mm -hmm. it was interesting because as we, <coughs> as we started kind of getting out there, it, it was really great. The more uh -huh. out there we got, the more it was like this natural like push and pull where we would pull it back in and I think naturally try to build out a structure around it. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can keep playing games like this with different topics. Like we could go, if I was doing it with you guys, I might have Kiki start one and then Adrian start one. We can change the rules. Um, we could do a fundraiser to have John wear those shoes. <laughs> Poor John, you know. <laughs> I gotta love it. But again, it's just, it's another way of getting us thinking differently. You know, and if we go to the final one, like Adrian came, has got these shoes you can fly with, they get points, the world leaders want them, John Graham won't look great in high heels. So she, we're gonna create shoes that fit everybody. Then the next question of the game is if we have those shoes, what else will be true mm -hmm. in this universe? Interesting. Okay. okay. So if we have shoes, our association, we're going to now do this. They're shoes. They can fly everywhere at will. They're sparkly. They're fun. And they're all different aesthetics as well. If your shoes can take you any place, what else would be true in this universe? Kiki, what's one thing? I wouldn't be beholden to any uh, of the typical business travel BS that I have to deal with, like the airports and things like that. Fantastic. And it would be so much faster. We would all be able to go at will. So I could be just in time, fast, speed right there when someone needs me. Adrian, what else would be true in this universe? Oh, I restated that because I was busy typing and <laughs> paying attention. That's okay. Um, so I, if you had these hmm. shoes. <laughs> If we had these shoes that fly at will, that you can just go in, they're, as you said, any ready for any aesthetic, maybe they magically change into fitting the owner's mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. That would be even fun. So, 
But what would be true um, in that universe? It would be true if we could, if we made these available to everyone, then everyone could be included in the ability to have these abilities and, and um, make a difference and make changes in the world. Mm-hmm. What else would be true, Kiki? Um, we would probably be seeing new regulations on who sells the shoes, you know, <laughs> who's able mm-hmm. to sell the shoes and who's able to buy them because you wouldn't want little kids mm-hmm. buying shoes that they can fly across the country in. Teenagers, people who have teenagers would be very nervous. <laughs> Karen's saying traffic laws for <laughs> shoe flights. <laughs> right in the same way. Like. Right. So you get if we could go on and on with this. So something like this, starting to play these games, you can play them at your dinner table with your kids. Start teaching your kids to be more strategic. You could do them on first dates. You know, I'm a full service person. Let's help your love life. Wow. So let's play wow. fantasy. Cynthia, I know. <laughs> That, I know. I mean, it's like the FAA is uh, getting uncomfortable. And now that Cynthia is helping all of our love lives, I, I'm feeling more comfortable. Absolutely. So this, I don't know. Take that. Oh, no. But you could do this at staff meetings. You could do this at board meetings. You could start it, you know, just start with the silly and then switch over to something I association I mean, you can see how that would work yeah. out because we took this great example that you gave us here. But once we ran this through, why wouldn't we run through an actual an issue that we're we're facing and start exploring that? I mean, it makes perfect sense to do that. And keeping it in just as light a vein, because what happens is we then shift down to, oh, we've got to yeah. be serious. We've got to have the right. Idea. No, no, no. Um, it's like I don't I don't like calling strategic planning strategic planning anymore. I like calling it future bending so adventures. Wait, so how do you how do you keep it light though? I mean, this is where actually and someone said just don't oh Adrian said just don't have it <laughs> the introverts start the game. It's so true, but I can see yeah. how there would there would naturally be this this huge challenge. I mean you feel this push to try to make things normal normal again, uh, and to try to go rush back to that space. How do you how do you avoid right. that? Well, you know what? It's going to be just like losing weight. It's the consistency of application, right? We need to, we've got to get people to go comfortable because absolutely. The minute I, t- I say, yes, I've lost 10 pounds. The diet's done. What do we do? I can eat real food again, right? <laughs> Why are you looking right at back. my life? Why? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's true. It's true. Right. Right. I don't want but so it's like, how do you keep this a conversation? How do you get this into your culture? How do you get this into something that you do the monthly report on? Um, like I like to call it the waves of change. What have you noticed coming in the waves this this month? You know, how do we start normalizing it? Because until we start normalizing the idea that we've got to become more fluid and responsive, we're going to go back to the way we've always done things. We're going to focus on best practices, which often encourages mediocrity because it's based on the past. And we're going to just stay where we are while the world around us changes like so crazy. Can I? Oh, look at the time. All right. So let me break really quickly for a quick word from our sponsors. Uh, yes, I have to absolutely say thank you every time it becomes this time in the chat. It's time to take a quick break for questions to talk about the association chat. Fabulous silver sponsor, Fontiva. Fontiva aims to develop flexible, easy to use software tools to help transform your business. Fontiva's member nation makes managing and growing your organization easier than ever before. Be sure to connect with Fontiva on Twitter at at Fontiva Inc. and tell them your favorite thing about association chat. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks everyone for that break. Now, as we're coming back to the questions, um, I wanted to draw in our our introvert on screen, Adrian, and ask you, Adrian. So, in your experience as an association executive and in working with um, other association executives and your board, you know, what are some of the challenges that you're sensing, feeling, um, imagining when we're talking about sort of confronting the strategic illiteracy and making changes in associations? 
Well, I, uh, well, I'll go back to a lot of the things that have already been said. Either people fear not saying anything at all because they don't want to appear that they don't know anything, which I find um, very interesting because I, I just don't work that way. <laughs> if I don't know, I don't know. And I'm going to tell you I don't know. Yeah. That's not the way I learn. Um, and I, I think that re- as it surrounds a lot of different things, I think people are just afraid to have the conversations, um, particularly when you're talking about things like diversity and inclusion. Um, it, it seems like we we talk all the way around it, but we never really talk about it and how we're going to lay out a strategic plan for it. It's like, yes, we need that. We need a statement. We need this, but we never actually come up with a plan. Um, so that's what I see that as far as boards that I participate on um, and what I hear a lot of people, um, I don't want to say the word complain, but um, you know, that the troubles that they're having is just at those particular areas. Well, okay. So, you know, you're right. I think that people get together, they complain. And I think part of this maybe speaks to Cynthia, what you were talking about with it shouldn't be something where it's only once a year that, or it's only at these specific times, you know, irregularly where, you know, you just don't have enough time to make things happen. It has to be this consistent application of effort. And so I don't know, you know, I, I guess a lot of times we look at it needing to be the top down in situations like this, where it has to be the executive director, somebody who is, saying, okay, this now needs to be a priority for this organization. Is that the case here? Is that the case with with what you're talking about, Cynthia? You know, it's a combination because you're not going to come in and say, okay, we're not doing anything we've been planning. We're throwing the baby out with the bathwater and woo, it's a new world. It's a new day, right? And yet on the, on the flip side, we need to create some capacity and space to be doing some of this innovative new strategic type work at the same time so it's going to be figuring out what's that balance but making sure both parts Mm -hmm. are represented um what what you'll start seeing is as things change you know some of the stuff hits you could have a really fast drop in membership or a really you know hard hit um i come here a lot of people having trouble getting people to their uh pd events now you know and there's that what is it like and do you do the powerpoint do you do the experiential learning (laughs) <laughs> excuse me you know what is it that takes to get people out oh and then we start saying things like this group doesn't want to do that right oh if we do dni then this won't happen oh if we do this we won't do that and it's like we jump straight to rules versus getting into that playful creative space of huh what might this look like you know getting beyond we need to do something we need to do something yes we do and huh what mm-hmm. could this look like um, you know, as you know, I'm doing improv yeah. now and yeah, one of the things that you get trained in an improv is jumping in, sort of exploring the universe, like what we just did a few minutes ago. And so you actually jump in and say, what is this going to be like? How does this feel? What does this look like? And we don't tend to do that. We tend to say, here's what we need. Oh, we've got to do something. Let's pick it and then do it. And instead of, you can even do that testing on the spot with the right process questions, you know, even similar to what we just did, what does this feel like? What else would need to be true? How would, how might people react? How could we get beyond this? What is this really about? You know, getting better at questions yeah. is part of it. It's so easy just to take it. And it could be too that, you know, a lot of times for the execs to come in as the challenger is a little bit more challenging. So maybe you get someone, a consultant to work with you to help grow that and then shift it over. So it's not you coming in out of the blue as someone who knows everything. And now you're like, oh, what could this be? Would this be fun? All right. Um, I want to, intro. Adrian, do you have another question for Cynthia? Or Cynthia, do you have another question for Adrian? Because I'm sensing the the get me <laughs> off of here feel vibe from you. <laughs> and so do you, want, do you want me to close out the window? Or did you have something else that you wanted to ask? I was actually typing a question in the questions and answers. So I'll just ask it. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right. So one, as you were talking, one of the things that I started thinking about in answer to Kiki's um, previous question, uh, a lot of what I also hear is, we don't want to rock the boat because the old guard 
is still around and we don't want to mm-hmm. disrupt the norm because they're not going to agree with anything and they don't like the whole fun and games right. aspect and all this kind of stuff. So how would you take a team of staff or volunteers or the majority um, are the old guard? Um, because honestly, the old guard's not going anywhere. And if we wait 10, 20 mm-hmm. years for them to go somewhere, you're never going to change. You're never going right. to do anything. Exactly. You'll be dead or they will. Yeah. So, you know, I talk fun and games while we're talking here a lot just because that's how it is. You don't have to frame it with that language. So you can, it's, can still be very respectful and all that. You know, it's it, it starts off with a position, I think, for the leader themselves is if you are going to let the old guard continue to run everything, you're going to be left behind. And you put yourself, it's a risk management issue to allow the old guard to run everything at this point, given the disruption and the changes. So if we know it's a risk management issue, then how do we approach it? And so what do they need to know to get off the old guard space? Well, they're stuck in the past. You know, that's not how we do things because they don't understand, because it's scary, because they don't want to look foolish, because they don't know answers and they don't like that feeling. Um, and because it just is like safer not to do anything. And so it's taking like those things and looking through for each of them, what can we do to turn them into superheroes for being willing to be brave enough to step out and see what's happening and take us to this next level. So it's actually coming up with a frame and I'm, I'm using superheroes loosely, no, looking at your old guard and what's important to them how can you turn them into that type of superhero or that place where it's worth the facing their fears down to take the steps you know what, to change? Though, that, God, that's hard, Cynthia. Okay, so so you know I'm walking into my association and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, my God, I have all of this stuff that I'm trying to keep up with on my own. I have inboxes overflowing. I've got staff over here that I've mm-hmm. got to deal with. I've got this that I've got to get get out. And now I'm trying to think, like, how am I going to build up these these certain people into being superheroes? It sounds so, ch- I mean, to, to be, like, it sounds challenging at the very least and almost impossible if, if I'm realistic. Like, it seems really hard, <laughs> you know? Well, it, you know, but... You- you got to be really careful with how you frame mm-hmm. this stuff up because when you say it's challenging and almost impossible, you're right, going to be right. 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 Cause, I mean, if you were my CEO that I was working with and we were there, I, I would, I would take you on with that commentary right there because when you believe that you're right, yes, you're busy. Yes. You've got this stuff. And if you think it's going to be so hard, you're not going to get any place. You've already decided what's going to happen. So it would be even working with you to first believe that change is possible mm-hmm. for them before you can even start looking at how we right. can change them. Because it doesn't have, if you go into it and you work with it strategically, it doesn't have to take a lot of effort and a long time to necessarily well, change them. If you can get down to what's important that makes it worthwhile, then you can move well, a lot Well, let's talk faster. about that then. Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm always just trying to figure out, like, what would people be thinking or asking um, to try to solve the problem for themselves. And so, you know, while I work for myself and I don't really, you know, mm-hmm. I, my dog listens to what I say most of the time, unless she's barking, uh, my husband, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I, I can see how people are at this point, they would probably be thinking, okay, well then tell me how I get, like how it can be that is, positive and good and it can happen in a short amount of time with dedicated effort give give me that you know give me that alter you know that alternative that option but you know what i would say is that this it's so that's even still so broad and i think perhaps that's part of the issue is we want the band-aid to just come in and take care of things And we've got to dig down because we don't know. I I don't know who your board is. I don't know what's the issues we're trying to work on. I don't know how it is, you know, what their sticking point is. Um, Like with some groups, I I would guess with you especially, you know, technology is an issue. They don't understand why you need to be, you know, 
on, you know, that Facebook or whatever, or, or you know, different things like that. So it's like they have a mm -hmm. knowledge gap. And so then I would look at the knowledge gap and how can I educate them and make it interesting and exciting for them. I worked with one CEO um, in secret uh, a couple years ago because she didn't get technology and thought social media was a waste of time. And she was a really high level CEO in, the, um, in our world. And so I started with her on showing her getting, we got so you, know, you could see my screen and we went snooping on her grandkids. <laughs> You know, and she had no idea that her she could watch her grandkids who she loved and adored and, you know, that she could then communicate with them and she'd have to go through the parents to find out what was going on with the teens. And so now all of a sudden this thing that she didn't see value in became relevant. Yeah. Does that make sense? So that's a, that's a real specific answer to a specific mm -hmm. challenge. But we can't just say, well, what's the thing that's going to make them do this? Because we got to know who they are and what okay, it is. So. I want to get to talking a little bit about the program that we've talked about that you created, um, the Association mm -hmm. Lifeguard Program, because mm -hmm. first of all, it's spring, and so now we're mm -hmm. now we're getting in that kind of beachy frame of mind. But can you tell me a little bit about this Association Lifeguard Program? Um, it's all about helping association leaders be more strategic. What does that look yeah. like? So what I've realized is that as I've been talking about this, your reaction, Kiki and Adrian, is so typical. You know, it's like, what the heck am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to learn to do this? I don't have time for this. I don't even know where to start. I don't want anyone to know that I don't know where to start. And so I came up with this concept of, you know, the waves of change are coming at us constantly now. And so who protects us from the waves of change? It's the mm -hmm. lifeguards. Right, the lifeguards looking out for the members, looking out for the good of whatever. And so I created this lifeguard program where like the first class is gonna be wave reading one oh one. And I we're gonna simply like, what are waves? <laughs> you know? Yeah, what are the waves? Which are the big waves? How do you analyze them so you know what the potential impact can be? And we're gonna do it together. And it's just it's you know, this first class is just like two hours of programming, one hour, one week, one hour the next week, and we'll do it together so that we can play with it virtually and experience it like the, the little game that you, the three of us play. So that they can say, oh, okay, this is, I can breathe here, I can do this. And so it's looking at how to turn that learning into something that's fast, enjoyable, and they walk away being able to do it. And then I also am launching the, the Wave Readers Crew for people that once a month for one hour, we're gonna get together and we're gonna read the waves together. And it's just one hour of us coming together, reading the waves. So whether or not your staff, your leadership or whatever is not there yet, you can come read it with us. We'll do the analysis. We'll do a mind map of what we do, document it. And then they go out and they is get it as a PDF. Like so, how many people do you, can you have in this? Or is it, is it? Okay. Hundreds. All right. It's virtual. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it's gonna be just really cool to sit there and see so that they can start building their skills like on the sly and look you know even more brilliant when they go talk because i want to teach them how to also um look at the trends before they mm -hmm. hit because there's a there's a art to it where you look at and say oh i'm noticing this i'm noticing this i'm noticing this, noticing this and then you triangulate everything so then here's the true story that comes out and so like that'll be part of the wave reading classes how do you these look like three little waves but when you put them together Ooh, here's an opportunity. Because yeah. what we do is when you can read the waves of change, you can see what's coming and start doing this strategic analysis and such, then you can, instead of being hit by them so that your association has to go in responsive mode, like, what do you mean there's a AI attorney out there and they're already doing this and I'm, you know, you're gonna start seeing it coming at you. So they can say, is this a risk? Do I need to put these guards up, Let's put the sandbags down, get some more lifeguards? Do we need to read this more frequently? Or, wow, look at this is coming. I see the writing on the wall. Let's get a product in here. Let's get a, let's do a virtual conference on this. Let's do this and help protect right. my members. So it becomes really cool and much more responsive I love potential. That. I just think that's amazing. Yeah. So does anybody else have any questions? I, I don't want to monopolize the last moments that we have with Cynthia here, but I do want to make sure that if you have questions about the program or if you have questions about you know, um, how strategic literacy could be 
you know, challenging your, your association's future that you get a chance to ask those. If no one does, I do have a question or a comment or <laughs> that I can fill in the time. So yeah. <clears throat> part of what I've been thinking about as you've been talking is um, when you talked about the Band-Aid, I think a lot of the problem also is everyone expects, okay, we're going to plan strategically and then that's going to fix everything overnight. And so I go back to the mm -hmm. weight analogy. Well, I didn't gain 50 pounds overnight. I'm not going to lose 50 pounds overnight. So do, do you think that a good part of explaining this to people and part of the strategic plan is helping them understand that it is going to take time, that you are going to have to set benchmarks and milestones. And then how do you um, also get some quick wins in there so that they can see progress and feel good about what they're doing? Well, it's exactly what you said. You're going to set yourself up for that. And then I would also start looking at how can I create part of my plan that is super responsive to the waves of change. Um, it's like I met with a CEO of a major nonprofit in Michigan the other day, and she was talking about how all her funding's on a three-year cycle. And I'm like, you can't, you've got to get more flexible than every three years. And so we're talking about like opportunity fund um, so we can get in. And the other thing is, is getting out fast enough. Sometimes you, you pick the, the three-year project, the two-year project, you're in it, and you may see this stuff coming that it's going to destroy it, and you don't stop doing it because, well, I've got mm -hmm. the plan. So it's, it's also looking at how do we get the quick wins and how do we get the yeah. quick outs, right? If it's not working, if it's not the right fit, we have to get out as well as get in. This sounds really, really interesting to me as far as what the potential is for people um, if they choose to go in and explore a little bit more. As is often the case, I think that a lot of it comes down to just if people are willing to grow and if they're willing to challenge themselves to be you know, the best they can be. And a lot of times, you know, I think that it's hard for people to take that on, but if they are able to, they can absolutely transform their lives, their, the people, like the people around them's lives, you know, they're, they're able to really transform their organizations. And so I'm excited. To it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, time. I'm excited to find out it's what happens huge. down the road as a result of all this. Well, and I think, too, the other thing that's going to be super important is that we, while we have our, our you know, professionalism and all that, we need to keep an element of lightness yeah. to this as yeah, well, be because we've got people in, it's got to be, I mean, that's why I went with the lifeguard theme and wave watching crew and stuff like that, because we need to keep it in that light space where it's yeah. safe to grow. Yeah. You know, you're not going to go from, oh, let's do this thing, and boom, we're going to go back down to the seriousness. And... You know, I've got my MBA. Okay, great. And this is all research based. And the minute you go into this heavy dutiness, we start shutting people down, especially when we're going into the innovative space. You know, if I can't fail and get out of something as fast as I got into it, how can I dare to do anything? Which, you know, the years in front of us, we're in a time of great failure and great opportunity and super yeah. excitement. Yeah. And we got to get over ourselves. Yeah. X and C's are irrelevant now, you know? It doesn't matter. So this one didn't work. Congratulations, you tried it, okay. right? All right, guys, you asked for it then because it's almost all the time we have, but not quite because at the end of association chats lately, I have been trying to work in a word association game. And so since Cynthia's on and Adrian's on, I'm going to throw her into it. And all of you who are watching live right now, you're able to participate as well. You're just going to have to type in. But here is the way it works. I'm going to throw out a word and you're going to share with me the first word or short phrase that comes to mind. All right. So word association game. We're going to, we're going to do three of these and then we'll wrap things up. I'll tell you what's coming coming down the way for association chat. Uh, so here we go. Do you want it relevant to today or just, just in general? Just in general, just in general. Okay. okay, word association game, association chat style. Go. The word is teach. Teach. 
Who do you want to respond? Uh, we'll start with Cynthia, then we'll go Adrian. Karen already responded with learn. Very good. All right. So, <laughs> my answer. so Cynthia, go. Just as soon as it comes <laughs> out, because it's as soon as it comes out. Okay. Teach it okay. fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Joseph Campbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Amanda's think. Lawrence says grow. Seatbelt. Safety. Yeah. Safe. Hang on for the ride. Hang on for the ride. All right. <laughs> there you go, Adrian. Right. And the last word is sales. Yacht. Oh. Do you have to have sales? <laughs> I oh. heard the pitch. I guess it depends on what kind of sales. Um, luxury options. Luxury options. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for playing the word association game. All right. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for association chat today. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for sharing with all of us and giving us this great insight. It's been a fantastic chat as always. I always love uh, learning from you and hearing what you're up to and what you're discovering. So thank you for, for the, your time today. So that's it. What did you think? Did you have a good time? Give us some love on social media and see you next time.